Yo, what's going on, yo? I'm JB Hoops, and today I got my mock draft 1.0. It's just going to be a full first round mock draft based on the current standings. So by the time I put this video out, the order might have changed a little bit. But anyway, let's just get right into it. So with the number one overall pick, I have the Houston Rockets selecting Victor Wembanyama, the 7-4 big man out of France. This is the obvious pick. I'm 99.9% .9 sure whatever team lands number one is taking Victor Wembanyama. He's 7'4", does everything on the floor on both ends, and the self-creation and movement shooting is ridiculous, and just overall, Wemby is a special talent. So I have the Rockets selecting him at 1 to pair with their young core. The Pistons are on the clock at 2, and I have them taking Scoot Henderson, the 6'3 guard out of the G League Ignite. They already have Kay Cunningham and Jaden Ivey, but Scoot is just too great of a prospect to pass up on, so whoever has the second pick should just take Scoot Henderson, and figure everything else out later. Scoot's an incredible athlete with great feel and skill and a deadly pull-up jumper. He does a bit of everything on the floor and always impacts winning. He looks like a future superstar and would be the number one pick in the majority of other drafts. But in this stacked draft class, I have the Pistons selecting Scoot Henderson at two. The Spurs are up at three and I have them taking the 6'7 guard out of the overtime elite, Amen Thompson. I feel like the Spurs would be the perfect developmental environment for Amen Thompson. He's one of the greatest basketball athletes of all time and has some scary two-way upside, but he also has a lot of work to do regarding his jump shot and touch around the basket. The Spurs have a ton of nice complementary pieces, and with Amen Thompson as their point guard of the future, they're going to be a very exciting team. At 4, I have the Charlotte Hornets selecting Cam Whitmore, the 6'7 freshman out of Villanova. The Hornets don't really have many young key players. Apart from Lamelo Ball and maybe Mark Williams, everyone else seems expendable. So I have them banking on Cam Whitmore's star potential. Whitmore is a super explosive and powerful athlete. He's a confident and capable shooter, and he's had some really impressive flashes on the defensive end. The Hornets need their go-to guy, and I think Cam Whitmore can become that for them. So that's why I have the Hornets selecting him at 4. The Magic are up at 5 and I have them drafting Keontae George, the 6'4 freshman out of Baylor. I really like the Magic's front line of Franz, Paolo and Wendell Carter Jr. And whilst they have some really solid guards, I think Keontae George can come in and take over as the lead guard and shot creator. He's a top 5 shooter in the draft, a tough defender and a fearless playmaker. I think he can play both guard spots and with the playmaking and handling in the front court, I don't think they necessarily need a traditional point guard. So I really like the Magic as a landing spot for Keontae George, and that's why I have them selecting him at 5. The Pelicans are up at 6 via the Lakers swap, and I have them selecting the 6-5 combo guard out of Arkansas, Nick Smith Jr. With the moves the Lakers made at the deadline, the Pelicans probably won't be picking this high, but for now I have them taking Nick Smith Jr. at 6. I still think the Pels need a long-term big to pair with Zion, but they could also use another scoring guard who can take over for CJ in a few years. Nick Smith hasn't played much this year, but the scoring upside and touch are just obvious, and he'd be a monster playing next to B.I. and Zion. So I have the Pelicans selecting Nick Smith Jr. at 6. At 7, I have the Pacers selecting Jarris Walker, the 6'8 freshman out of Houston. Walker has been phenomenal lately, and he's probably top 5 on my big board right now. He's incredible defensively, a great passer, and a very skilled forward. He's not been able to showcase all of his offensive bag at Houston, but he's been making the right plays on both ends, impacting winning and shooting it really well from deep. The Pacers have some nice guards and wings, and I think Jarris Walker would thrive in Rick Carlisle's system. So I have the Pacers drafting Jarris Walker at 7. The Wizards are on the clock at 8, and I have them selecting Asar Thompson, the 6-7 wing out of the overtime elite. It's really hard to know what the Wizards are thinking. They're kind of just stuck in the middle of trying to make a run for the play-in and tanking. They could go either way this season, but for now, I have them selecting Asar Thompson at 8. He's an elite athlete like his brother, an incredible defender, and his shot is coming along. He's a great prospect, and I really want the Wizards to take a chance on a high upside guy. And I think Asar Thompson's upside is among the best in this class. And that's why I have the Wizards taking him at 8. The Raptors are up at 9, and I have them selecting Brandon Miller the 6'9 freshman out of Alabama. The Raptors are in a bit of a weird position. They just traded for Jakob Pertl and didn't move any of their guys, but they still probably won't make the play-in. But regardless, they could use a shooter of Brandon Miller's caliber. Miller has great size, can shoot it in any way. He's a good passer and a fluid mover with some intriguing off-the-dribble flashes. And I think Toronto would be a really good spot for him to land in. So I have the Raptors taking Brandon Miller at 9. 
the Magic are up at 10 via the swap with Chicago, and I have them selecting the 6'8 freshman out of Michigan, Jet Howard. In this mock, the Magic already took Keontae George, but adding another elite shooter makes them a scary team. Jet has great size, can pass, and can be really damaging off handoffs and pin downs, and I think he would fit perfectly into the Magic's young core. At 11, I have the Thunder selecting Gigi Jackson, the 6'10 freshman out of South Carolina. OKC have already far exceeded expectations, especially considering everyone counted them out after Chet got injured. But with this pick, I have them adding Gigi Jackson the second to their exciting young core. They seem to like gambling on high upside toolsy wings, and that's exactly what Gigi Jackson is. He's a fluid mover, can shoot it, and he's had some really impressive self-creation flashes. And I think he would be a nice frontcourt partner next to Chet if OKC found themselves picking later on in the lottery. It's looking like the Jazz might tank for the rest of the season, so they might find themselves picking a bit higher than this. But for now, I have them taking Derek Whitehead, the 6'7 freshman out of Duke at 12. He's struggled with injury and hasn't been very consistent, but the shot making flashes, 3 point shooting and all around game should put him in lottery discussions. And the Jazz could use a versatile high upside wing to help push forward their rebuild. So I have the Jazz taking Derek Whitehead at 12. The Blazers are on the clock at 13 and I have them taking Taylor Hendricks, the 6'9 freshman out of UCF. The Blazers are in a bit of a weird spot where they might sneak into the playoffs but aren't really a serious threat, but for now I have them taking Taylor Hendricks. He's got good size and can really shoot it, but he's also an extremely versatile defender who moves well in space and can protect the rim. Taylor Hendricks would fit in nicely with their current guys, but he'd also be a really nice piece for their future. So that's why I have the Blazers taking him at 13. At 14, I had the Warriors selecting Maxwell Lewis, the 6'7 sophomore out of Pepperdine. Max Lewis can score on all three levels, pass, and really shoot it from deep. He's a smooth athlete and could make an impact for the Warriors with his ability to attack closeouts, shoot the three, and play off the ball. So I have the Warriors taking Maxwell Lewis at 14. At 15, I have the Hawks taking Cason Wallace, the 6'4 freshman out of Kentucky. I really like Cason Wallace's game and think he would be a perfect fit on the Hawks. He's one of the best guard defensive prospects of the past decade, a great shooter and just makes winning plays. I'm not super high on DeJounte Murray and I think Cason Wallace is too good to let fall any further, so I have the Hawks taking him with the 15th pick. The Jazz are back on the clock with the 16th pick via the Timberwolves, and I have them going with the 6'7 point guard out of Arkansas, Anthony Black. The Jazz have a lot of guys who can get you a bucket, and I think they would perfectly complement Anthony Black's playstyle. He's got great vision, can defend multiple positions, and is relentless when attacking downhill and getting to the line. His jump shot and touch need work, but with all the great scorers and shooters in Utah, I think he'd be a great fit, so I have the Jazz taking Anthony Black at 16. The Lakers are up at 17 via the Pelican swap, and I have them selecting Grady Dick, the 6'8 freshman out of Kansas. The Lakers picked up some nice younger guys at the deadline, but you can never have enough shooting, and Grady Dick is an elite shooter. He's solid defensively, one of the best connectors in the class, and a very underrated athlete, and Grady Dick would be a seamless fit on pretty much every team in the league, so I have the Lakers taking him at 17. The Nets are up at 18 with their pick from the Suns, and I have them taking Terquavion Smith, the 6'4 combo guard out of NC State. The Nets are kind of hard to draft for as they just have a ton of good players with no real go-to guy, and the Suns pick probably won't be this high with KD, but for now I have them taking an elite shooter and shot creator in Terquavion Smith. He needs to improve as a finisher and with his consistency on both ends, but he's gotten a lot better as a passer and I really like his upside and think he'd be a great fit with the Nets, and that's why I have them taking him at 18. The Rockets are up at 19 with their pick from the Clippers, and I have them selecting Bryce Sensabar, the 6'6 freshman out of Ohio State. Sensabar is one of the best scorers in the class, he's a phenomenal shooter off the catch and gets whatever he wants in the mid-range. He's improved defensively and as a decision maker over the course of the season, and I think the Rockets could really use another spacer and shooter on the wing, so I have them drafting Bryce Sensabar at 19. The Blazers are on the clock at 20 with their pick from the Knicks, and I have them going with Derek Lively the second, the 7-1 freshman out of Duke. I've been a fan of Derek Lively to the Blazers since before this season. The Blazers are excellent offensively, but really struggle on the defensive end, especially with protecting the rim. And Derek Lively the second is an elite shot blocker and rim protector with an incredible 14.3 block percentage, as well as some intriguing offensive upside. So I have the Blazers drafting him with the 20th pick. The Knicks are up at 21 via the Dallas pick, and I have them selecting Amoni Bates, 
the 6'10 sophomore out of Eastern Michigan. The Knicks have a lot of talent on their roster, and a rookie probably won't get a whole lot of opportunity if Tibbs is still the head coach, so I have them gambling on the star upside of Amoni Bates. Bates is a ridiculous shooter and shot maker at 6'10", and with a more defined role could be a really impactful bench scorer. But I also still think there's a chance he becomes the star he was hyped up to be throughout high school, so I have the Knicks taking a chance on him at 21. At 22, I have the Heat going with the 6'8 junior out of Iowa, Chris Murray. Keegan Murray's twin brother is ready to contribute to an NBA team, and I think the Heat would be the perfect system for his skill set. The Heat needs some size and some shooting, and Chris Murray provides both of those things. He's well-rounded and NBA ready, and if the Heat is still trying to win and Chris Murray is available, it should be a no-brainer selection, so I have the Heat taking Chris Murray at 22. At 23, I have the Kings going with Colby Jones, the 6'6 junior out Xavier. The Kings offense is incredible, and I think Colby Jones could come in, operate out of DHOs with his passing and mid-range pull-up, as well as help them out a lot on the defensive end. And with how much he's improved as a shooter, I think there's a very good chance he's taken in the first round. So I have the Kings taking Colby Jones at 23. The Nets are back on the clock at 24, and I have them going with Khalil Ware, the 7-foot freshman out of Oregon. The Nets have desperately needed a backup big man for a few years now, and I think Khalil Ware would be a great fit on the Nets. He's huge with super long arms, he probably has a 7-6 plus wingspan. He's a great play finisher, can stretch the floor and protect the rim. He doesn't get a whole lot of opportunity at Oregon, but he's a high upside big that could be a backup for the Nets from day one. So that's why I have them taking him at 24. At 25, I have the Grizzlies going with Kyle Filipowski, the 6'11 freshman out of Duke. Flip is a super skilled big and a very well-rounded player. He can dribble, pass, and shoot, and has been very solid defending in space. Memphis already have so many young guys, so they might end up trading this pick. But Kyle Filipowski is a guy who could play the 4 or the 5, and just give you a bit of everything on the floor. The Pacers are up at 26 with the Cavs pick, and I have them drafting Noah Clowney the 6'10 freshman out of Alabama. Clowney's a super versatile defender, and he's had some very intriguing offensive flashes attacking closeouts, finishing inside, and draining threes. He can defend multiple positions and play on different spots of the floor, so I have the Pacers selecting Noah Clowney at 26. Drafting at 27 via the Sixers, I have the Jazz taking Deron Holmes the second, the 6'10 sophomore out of Dayton. I already have the Jazz taking Derek Whitehead and Anthony Black, so with their late first round pick, I think Deron Holmes the second would be a great pickup. With Walker Kessler filling the more conventional drop big and rim protector role, Holmes could give them a different look at the five where they could play more aggressive defensively and have a more versatile offensive option. He can score in the post, hit jumpers and finish plays, and I really like the energy he brings on both ends. So I have the Jazz taking Deron Holmes the second at 27. At 28 via the Nuggets, I have the Hornets selecting Jordan Walsh the 6'7 freshman out of Arkansas. After losing Jalen McDaniels at the trade deadline, I think Jordan Walsh could step in and fill a similar role. He's a special defensive prospect with incredible instincts and a 7'3 wingspan. He's great at attacking off the catch and finishing through bodies. His jump shot is serviceable, and I think with more time and reps, he could develop into a great role player for the Hornets. The Clippers are up at 29 with the Bucks pick, and I have them going with Leonard Miller, the 6'10 forward out of the G League Ignite. Leonard Miller has been very productive for the G League Ignite. He's a fluid athlete, a great finisher, and he has really good touch. His jumper needs a lot of work, but I would definitely bet on his size and upside this late in the first round. So I have the Clippers taking him at 29. With the 30th pick via Boston, I have the Pacers selecting Jordan Hawkins, the 6'5 sophomore out of UConn. He's a phenomenal shooter, especially off movement. He holds his own defensively and does a great job of getting to the line, and he should be a nice shooter to add to the Pacers' young group. So I have the Pacers ending off the first round, taking Jordan Hawkins at 30. Alright, now that is my full first round 2023 mock draft. Leave a like if you enjoyed it, let me know what you think down below, if you agree with the team fits, if you don't, whatever. And make sure to subscribe for more, I got more stuff coming out soon. Anyway, that's all I got. Chevy Hoops, out.